Welcome to another session in this Excel course. This time I'm going to talk about matrices and how to work with matrices in Excel. Well, for this, first off, I'm going to build some matrices here. Just consider here we're doing some kind of matrices. Doesn't matter how they look like, because, well, later on we will see whether what we want to do actually works with them. Okay, I have two matrices, so Basically, what I'm going to tell you here is how to use the four different ways of calculating with matrices. So we're talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Well, the first two are actually pretty easy and straightforward. It's matrix addition and subtraction, because we're doing this cell by cell. So we're going to do this here as well. So first cell plus, oops, First cell plus in the corresponding cell from the second matrix. Then we just fill this in for all rows, all columns, and get here the resulting sum of the two matrices. And well, obviously, we can do the same stuff if we go with subtracting the second from the first matrix. So we're doing this entry by entry. For all entries. Well, this works decently enough because this is cell wise. So here we don't need any specific functions. For all the other stuff I'm going to talk about, we actually need a bit more sophisticated approaches, more sophisticated formulas. And for this, we need to recall that the matrix as such is this whole construct. So this again is an array its range. We're going to use this to describe the whole matrix. Okay, so the next step here would be matrix multiplication. Matrix multiplication can be achieved, well, with something straightforward, which is matrix, and then mult for multiplication. As an entry, he wants to have two arrays. So basically, he wants to know two matrices, which should be multiplied. Our first one and the second one. If I press enter, I however get only one entrance entry here. This is three times three. This is also three times three. If I multiply them, result must also be three times three. So what's wrong here? Well, the problem with this function is that it's a matrix function. Matrix functions, they don't only give their answers into one cell, you have to select all the cells where the answers should be printed. So here, if the answer is a 3 times 3 matrix, I need to select 3 times 3 cells. Then, when I enter my formula, hold down Command and Shift, and then press Enter. And then he will write down the result here in all of the corresponding cells. Okay, what about if I'm doing this wrong, if I select too few or too many of the cells in the output? Well, we already saw selecting too few cells doesn't matter. Selecting too many cells doesn't also matter. Because here, for all the cells where there is nothing which he can report, he will just say not available. So actually here, I cannot make anything wrong, except if I select too little, too few cells, I might miss some of my output. Okay, so matrix multiplication works relatively straightforward. However, there's one error which might, we might make. What if I want to multiply? Let's directly select here nine cells. If I want to multiply a three times three matrix, with a 2 times 2 matrix. Well, you all might know this does not work. So how will Excel react to this? Well, he will only report something up here. And here we will tell me value error. So in this case, he cannot actually calculate this. There is something wrong with what he wants to do. And it's not that it will be infinity or something, there's something inherently wrong with doing this. 
Well, that's because cell, um, the um, number of columns in the first matrix and the number of rows in the second don't fit. So here, when I get this error, this actually means I selected two matrices which do not fulfill the requirements for matrix multiplication. So actually, I will always be told by Excel, does this work out or doesn't it work out? Okay, before we get to the fourth and final part, to dividing two matrices or rather getting an inverse of a matrix, I want to add one additional aspect here, and that's getting the transposed of a matrix. If I want to calculate this, I can use the function transpose, as I see here. However, the interesting part is most of the matrix functions in Excel are leading with an M. If I start with M trans, in this case, doesn't work. So transposing matrices works with writing only transpose, selecting the corresponding matrix. Well, again, if I here select only to few output cells, I will get an error telling me, well, I need more output because as compared to the matrix multiplication, here he actually needs all the spaces for the output. So here I need three times three matrix. But, well, in this case with transpose, I cannot select a two little output or two small output matrix. But if I select a too large one, still this doesn't matter. So if you have the choice, you're not really sure what your output will look like, better select something which is too large than something which is too small. Okay, so that was the part on transposing matrices. Well, obviously, instead of doing it like this, you could also have selected this, copied this, went to paste, paste special, and selected transpose here. So this would achieve the exact same thing as this one here. The only difference being, well, this is a formula. So I can use something like this, for example, in the context of my matrix multiplication again. So if I want to multiply the transpose of this matrix and the transpose of this matrix, don't have to go the roundabout way. Okay, however, that's the introduction so far. So only one step left. That's the inverse of a matrix. Well, first, before I calculate this, I might be interested in knowing whether I actually can calculate the inverse of a matrix. And well, how do I find this out? By calculating the determinant. So if I want to calculate the determinant, for example, of this matrix, I might be motivated by the transposing part to use that or determinant as well as function and see doesn't work. That's the reason because here, he again works with the M part in front. So here I can use M that term and then I'm selecting the corresponding matrix. So here I get a determinant of one. So this matrix is invertible. Let's have a look here. What happens if I select a non-quadratic matrix for the determinant? Then we directly see this is also not a valid move because determinants can only be calculated for quadratic matrices. So here he's telling me with the value what you want to do is not valid. I cannot do this. Okay, however, we found out for the whole matrix determinant is one. So if we want to calculate the inverse, we just go with again m in and then inverse and then well we see he wants to have an array so he wants to know the matrix he has to invert similar to the m multiplication doesn't matter if i make this too small so i can just start like this select an all hold down shift and command press enter 
and get here the inverse of my matrix. Okay, works out perfectly well. I also see that, well, all the entries are actually um, integers, stay integers, because the determinant was one. Okay, so far so nice. But what if this matrix weren't invertible and I still use the inverse function? Well, let's just try this. I will just change this value here to a two. So then the second and the third row actually match, meaning the determinant will be zero. This matrix will no longer be invertible. If I do this, see, I get an error here, a number error, because I cannot calculate this, but only due to the fact that these numbers of the inverse would go into inf uh, towards infinity. That's his way of telling me I have a problem with doing this and the reason for this is this matrix is not invertible. Okay, so far for what we can do here, and we'll go back here to one. You cannot see it. even for other numbers, this works as well. This is a different example here. At this point, we have 2.96 e to the power of minus 16. Well, this looks strange. In particular, if I calculate the determinant of this matrix, it's minus one. So yeah, only considering the sign, this should still be an integer. So what does this actually mean? Well, EXA works iteratively in calculating the inverse matrix. So this is his way of telling you, I found a value here which is very small, but I'm not directly sure whether this should be zero. So if you were to copy this result down, this would signify with a relatively large value after the e minus that this actually is a zero. So this is just a result where you see that Excel works iteratively in getting inverse matrices and in some cases has a problem displaying zeros. And well, this then already concludes this session on matrices. So we learned about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division via inverse matrices, and in addition to all of this, how to transpose a matrix with some um, specific formula and how to get a matrix's determinant. At this point, some of you might be wondering, what about eigenvalues, eigenvectors? Yeah, that's pretty nice. But in the normal implementation, we do not have formulas for this. So you might have a look in the internet. There are f-ints available where you can calculate eigenvalues and eigenvectors but not in the standard implementation of Excel itself. So with those concluding remarks, I hope you enjoyed this session. And if you're looking for additional input, feel free to visit the rest of this course or have a look at the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.